I think कुछ 40, 45 bone sacks मैंने collect कर लिए थे and then through Bombay I just started sending these WhatsApps to people that you know if you need a bone set I have one and I started selling them and it seemed it seemed like the perfect um, opportunity till one of my teachers found out and they're like they're going to complain about you and this is illegal and that's when I stopped. So hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode uh, of Connecting Talks with me, Shashank Gurupa. And today I have a very, very, very special guest, uh, and his name is uh, Dr. Sidan Bargava. Uh, he is also very famous on Instagram. By the way, he gives a lot of <laughs> tips on uh, health and fitness. Um, and he also runs a company called Food Dirty. I'm pretty sure you guys might have heard of it. Um, so again, Sid, I think you should give a better introduction for yourself. I think that okay. Nice. So I think I think I think that was that was a great introduction. But just to add, so yeah, I'm Dr. Yeah. Sidan Bargav. I uh, finished my medicine four years ago or five years ago. That's when I thought of moving out of medicine. Thought that I wanted something more with life. Started a company called Food Dirty, which started as a ketogenic nutrition meal service kind of a brand. And then of course through the years. We expanded and we sort of broadened our horizons. And now Food Darzi functions as a holistic nutrition company. We've got a couple of sister companies called Baked Darzi and Coach Darzi, and of course we're yes. planning a lot of more verticals. But yeah, that's what I do as an entrepreneur by day. And the moment we get free from running Food Darzi, I try creating some kind of content <laughs> on Instagram, and it's been going well, man. So yeah, super happy to be here. Yeah, I recently saw you did a song as well, right? I think you did that with your co-founder, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the poetry <laughs> angle, not bad, yeah, but you're innovating yeah, on the yeah, content yeah. and running a business at the same time. Quite interesting. <laughs> so I okay. So this basic podcast is about connecting the dots, where we talk mm-hmm. about your past and how you've reached to this point where you uh, started Food Dirty, right? I I know you gave a very short version, but I want to know yeah. your journey when you did that, right? Obviously, you wouldn't have got success on day one, right? It would yeah. have been a lot of learnings and mistakes. So I think we will focus more on that and how what were your learnings. So if anyone else tomorrow wants to start or any budding entrepreneur wants to think about the food business, right? Uh, what should he keep in mind? So I want to know from your journey, how did you start Food Darzi? And what were like the moments that you want to forget and unforgettable at the same time? Super. So, you know, Shashank, I think uh, a person uh, sort of like, of course, when, when you're too young, you don't understand that you want to become an entrepreneur. But kuch, kuch logo ka wo rehta hai. like, for example, and why does one become an entrepreneur? One, you might like money, which shouldn't be the yeah. only thing, but you like money. Two, you want to you want to see something grow. You want your efforts to be recognized on a larger scale and you genuinely want to grow something from scratch. And yeah. I think these are two things which I ideally, if I would have identified much earlier, I would not have become a doctor. My dad's a doctor, <laughs> my granddad's a doctor. Or there was no way I was moving into medicine. But at that point, I thought that, you know, science is the only thing I know. Like yeah. I was always great with, with Padhai and I loved math. Like uh, I really liked math, but bio was something that really always intrigued me. But I was always a person who kept trying to find ways to come up with something random. Like I remember, <laughs> I remember this one time where I was so deeply invested into robotics and I used to make washing wow. machines and then I used to make my own detergent for my washing machine. And this was when I was in what, eighth or ninth standard. My parents would tell me that pagal ho gaya hai. Kyu isko is sari cheeze karne hai, chup chup baith ke padh le. So that was a point when I realized that, okay, I like building something from scratch and I sort of like if people appreciate me for something that they've not seen in the past so I identified that that I'm an attention seeker that sort of uh, that sort of (laughs) gives you why I love the attention that I get on Instagram and I think I'm okay with that I mean I think everybody to a point is an attention seeker of course of course now in the 11th and 12th that's when I think the concept of money and saving money sort of started hitting me harder because Mm. I remember that you know I I love playing sports and um, I knew, uh, of course, I come from a, 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 what is another word for, I don't like the word wealthy, but I come from a family that has its roots really set. Hmm. Uh, we never had to worry about anything. So I'm very fortunate to come from a family like that. Yeah. But I was the stingy one in that family. Like I remember not taking rickshaws and taking the bus in the ninth and the 10th when, you know, people my age were not really doing that because the school I went to, it was sort of odd that a person (laughs) wants to take the bus back home. 
then in the 11th and 12th i wanted to play badminton and i played i wanted to play table tennis and i realized that rickshaw ka paisa was 75 so i used to take the bus which oh got me in god. 7 then so i realized that i'm a person who values money a lot like hmm. i had two concepts that i want to save money and the second concept i want to make enough money that later i don't have to save it like that's how child thinks right like, i would go to a shop and buy something without looking at the price tag that was my philosophy i still have so it. when i entered <laughs> when i entered medicine that's when i thought that i'm stuck now because uh-huh. when you enter you get a lot of more exposure like my dad told me that you know this is how your life is going to be and the teachers in college tell you that you know you study then you do your specialization and then you get a job in a government hospital and then you can start your own practice and i just realized oh that isse nahi hone wala hai because uh the kids were the younger generation i mean we're fairly the same age and compared mm. to our parents i think our expectations are far greater from life than theirs was i'm not yeah. trying to generalize but i think we've just been exposed to a lot more and we've been exposed to a lot more successful people our age yeah. so hamare dimag mein bhi wo play karta hai that you know i want to be like that and i realize medicine se nahi hone wala hai wo so i kept thinking that what do i want to do what do i want to do and i start off sort of start getting into a rut like of course i enjoyed studying and i'm i'm still quite happy with studying new things but फर्स्ट या सेकंड ईयर में वो वेव आ गई थी दैट इवन इफ आई डू मेडिसिन आई डोंट नो प्रैक्टिस क्लिनिकल मेडिसिन आई वांट टू स्टार्ट अ हॉस्पिटल आई वांट टू स्टार्ट अ फार्मा कंपनी एंड ऑल दीस इमैच्योर थॉट्स बिकॉज़ टू मी इट 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 जस्ट सीम्ड दैट यू नो आई कम फ्रॉम अ फैमिली ऑफ डॉक्टर्स तो ऑल दिस इज गोइंग टू बी डैम इजी टू स्टार्ट लेटर आई रियलाइज इट्स नॉट गुड टू बी इन द सेकंड ईयर I saw a great uh, startup idea which was selling bones and that's when I realized selling what bones bones yep that's oh, bones <laughs> to whom so, uh, a medicine student you every single person has a bone set it's mm-hmm. around 60 65 bones that you have and you hang it and you have to basically study the crevices how the nerves move around okay. the bones where the arteries are placed the grooves on the bones the ridges after the first year i had a hand me down bone set from one of my cousins but i realized that people all across so bombay was my area i realized mm-hmm. sabko bones ki zarurat padti hai and for the first couple of months in the first year everybody is fretting for bones yeah. in the end in the buying this thing called a synthetic bone set which is made out of fiber and plastic and all of that which doesn't replicate the human body perfectly well so i thought this is my gap and oh my uh, god i went to a different step only because at one point in time i remember going to a graveyard near my house and asking them ki bhai apan log dig up kar sakte hai kya iska he was like chamar dunga nikal yahan se that's exactly But, what i was thinking how do you source these bones from i mean so now what start happening is that in the interiors of maharashtra hmm. uh, by default these bone sets costed 2000 rupees 2100 rupees and i remember in 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 mumbai the average price at these were being sold was around 4000 rupees 4100 rupees wow. wo bhi khod khod ke tumko nikalna padta tha hmm. and the synthetic bone sets would get sold for 10000 rupees and 11000 rupees and things like that hmm. so i did something very simple i called up everybody whom i knew from the interiors who was passing from the first year to the second year and i cutted a lot of bone sets like a lot of bones as in the cupboard in front of me right here was filled with bones and when my mom saw it she was shocked she oh thought i'm into the wiccan culture and i've lost my mind and all of that <laughs> so a lot of bone sets and then that's how it started i I think कुछ forty forty five bone sets मैंने collect कर लिए थे and then through Bombay I just started sending these WhatsApps to people that you know if you need a bone set I have one and I started selling them and it seemed it seemed like the perfect um, opportunity till one of my teachers found out and they're like they're going to complain about you and this is illegal and that's when I stopped I was like ठीक है I've made enough money I'm going to go on my college trip with my own money I'm going to buy my own alcohol that we were young like we wanted alcohol wait so you time. bought all the bone sets from the people for free. because they were no, anyway for 2500 rupees 2600 i used to give them 2 300 rupees extra and ah. for them it never struck them that this person is going to be selling them and so you sold it for 4 like, grand i sold it for 6 grand oh my god okay so, <laughs> cheaper than the synthetic ones nice so now hota kya tha that we used to sell half bone sets also so you purposely <laughs> would create a false sense of reduced supply And oh my god exactly and then pe- you would make them wait and wait and wait and then sell them half bone sets and then later tell them we found a full bone set and they would still want to find so basically i was using Madness. my head this selling this is crazy bones. yeah this is crazy this is crazy yahan pe i understood that i like this it's fun i like uh, the lane then of money but i don't think i ever understood perfectly because hmm. if my partners who are with me right now were on this business with me i'm sure <laughs> we would have made a lot more money like <laughs> I am so sure you would have made a lot. So this is how it began. Like this is mm. this is essentially how I knew that I won't be satisfied with earning good money at the age of forty five because tap tap to wo ghisna hi padega as a doctor. Mm. There's no there's no real way of making enough money till the time you don't have a wild private practice and 
I know the kind of life my dad's provided for me. I know the kind of car my dad gave me when I was twenty one and twenty two. Of yeah. course, it was like a Sandro only. But even to it's do possible, Sandro, yeah, to give that, yeah. That's what I wanted. I wanted to sustain my lifestyle from the age where he tells me that okay, now it's your turn to make money. Hmm. Now, ये decide हो गया था. Third year came about. I was going well with my exams and everything, and that's when I fell ill. So I got I got this condition called lupus. I don't know if you know what lupus mm-hmm. is, but no idea. It it got famous because Selena Gomez had lupus and she had to get a kidney removed and transplant and all of that. So basically, it affected me badly in the sense that I I my facial structure and my aesthetics changed completely. Like I've always been a boy who looks like that, hmm. and suddenly I became I went into a boy with like no eyelashes, no eyebrows, no hair on the scalp. Basically, oh. I used to look quite different. Huh. Us time pe the kind of medication like so it is a sob story and I've always I've always told the sob story but. Us time pe the kind of medication they put me on sort of lowered my immunity a lot, and they mm-hmm. told me that you cannot be going to a hospital where you're around sick people. So this was the time around the prelims of my final year. So I didn't give my prelims, and that time I sort of was in that zone that you know why is this happening to me, and I'm so unfortunate, mm-hmm. and I don't want to do this anymore. So I didn't give my prelims, and I thought, "Thik hai, I'm not going to finish my MBBS," and uh, you know, I just trusted myself, saying that, "See, you're not an idiot. Like mm-hmm. something or the other, that you'll do." So I said I'm not going to finish my MBBS now. Somewhere around the, after the prelims, the teachers called and they said that listen, prelims are all internal. You'll still be eligible. You give your exams and you pass it, and then you do what you want. And I did mm. that. Usi time pe when I was whiling away my time, uh, I had gone to this one friend's birthday party, and uh, this birthday. So now this is like a typical startup story. We were at this birthday party, Beautiful. and I was nicely drinking, sitting on a bean bag, and opposite me was one of my friends from school. And we were bitching about our parents that so at that time I had picked up bodybuilding. Okay, so my mm. mom has a fitness background. From the age of eighteen, she's always taught me. She got my certifications done, and she wanted me to come and teach in her academy because she's like, you know, you're becoming a doctor. You should know anatomy better than we do. Mm. So I was involved. Like I liked fitness, and by the time I was huge, like I was nice and muscular. So I tell my friend that you know our parents are so bad, and they don't let us get non-veg food in the house. And how will we increase our muscle size and hypertrophy? How will we do this? So he and I were tripping on this. And then we said that एक काम करते हैं तेरा भी MBBS खत्म हो रहा है ना तू अपने exams देके खत्म कर और अपन एक ऐसी service start करेंगे जहाँ पे for all these people who want a high protein diet we'll provide them non-veg food at home. This is literally how it started. Oh my god! This is literally how it started where two people from vegetarian households are bitching about their parents saying that we want non-veg at home. And two or three months later, once my MBBS was sort of coming to an end, this friend called me to meet. Two of his friends, and these mm. were like two elder people. They they had been working in PwC, Deloitte, and they quit mm. their jobs. And I was the youngest one there. And I remember I I I went and met them in in a beanie because I didn't have hair, and I had worn a sleeveless T-shirt that said Malbro. And I and I just thought it's cool, you know. I was in that phase where I'm a cool guy. So I went and <laughs> met them, and I saw the look on their face. And Devaj is the guy who I met at the party, and they looked at Devaj, and they were trying to understand that is this mm. actually who you've called? Like, are you sure you want to take make him a part of the company so we spoke and then the idea sort of spiraled we realized mm. that the high protein wala thing bahut small scale pe hoga mm. and we want to do something on the lines of uh, they come on board they have a fitness goal in mind we'll have a nutritionist and we'll give them food based on their diet mm. and this is how food does he started mm. the i think the biggest brain wave that we had was i identified that the ketogenic diet has just dipped its legs into the indian market like people are still intrigued yeah. uh, because a lot of the western celebrities were talking about it So we realized that instead of doing this whole nutrition thing, why don't we start Food Dazi as a ketogenic nutrition company? Hmm. And I think that was the best move we made. We were very skeptical because hmm. keto तब तक mainstream हुआ नहीं था और ऐसा नहीं कि मुझे keto के बारे में बहुत पता था. So we that was the best move we made. We entered the market as a ketogenic meal delivery company, and धीरे 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 just started growing because we had a lot of celebrities that came our way because quick weight loss उन के we had Tanmay Bhatt come our way. He recommended us to BuzzFeed. Wow. There was an entire story like a video story done on Tanmay Bhatt's diet where Food Dazi got plugged in, and that is when it just moved. Like I remember in a span of three weeks. Um, our orders used to be sixty, seventy people, and suddenly mm. post the Thanmay Bhatt video, we were at two hundred, two hundred and fifty people. Holy and of shit. course, that time, the SOPs are check how to hit it because we hadn't made capacity for two hundred and fifty people. But that was the smartest move we made: starting Food Darzi as a keto company and landing that Thanmay Bhatt diet BuzzFeed video. That's when it started, and that's when we realized it has potential. And then, of course, here we are today, still trying to expand, still trying to make a mark because. 
I still see a lot of people who have no idea what food that is. Yeah. Of course, it breaks my heart, but it just gives you sort of like an impetus to work harder and make sure that everybody knows who food that is. Wow. 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 That, that is quite inspirational. Now, I want to ask, right? Because as a founder, it's, I mean, you see a lot of ups and downs. Right? This is a mm-hmm. part of uh, an entrepreneur's life where it's, it's always like this. It's never an upward journey, right? Tell me one thing that you, you were like, oh shit, this, this got screwed up big time, right? When you okay. were building this, I mean, in the start, maybe. Definitely. The first thing that got screwed up was um, initially, see, so I'll give you a brief about who my partners are. All mm-hmm. three of them are Marwadis. I hope that is relevant to this conversation. Relevant. Fully relevant. <laughs> all, all three of them are extremely sharp. Like I used to feel dumb around them and I used to think I'm the smartest person on the planet of earth because I knew my biology really well and I cracked my neat very well and all of that. But they're the and paisa, money. They're the paisa. Yeah, I've learned so much from them, man. And they realized that we will start an outsourced kitchen. We will not put our own money. The model has to be asset light and we have hmm. to be making money from day one. These were rules. Like the entire startup thing that you, wow. know, you burn a little cash and all of that, they didn't have any money in their mind. Danda, it never struck them. Bilkul bhi nahi tha. You have to make money from day one is what their ideology was. Yeah. So we're like a more like a family run business who will now raise funds and probably enter the burning stage. But up to we've not burnt a single penny. We've been profitable from day one wow. as a rule. Hmm. So um, we got on with the chef and we discussed the commercials, everything. And a week and a half before we were starting our pilot, she tells me that I don't think uh, this is going to work out and your SKUs are too much and the margin is not enough for me. And she cans. That was one major yeah. setback because we had sub kuch planned tha, bohat sara inventory utha ke rakha hua tha and all of that and it can. So fata fat jugaad kiya, jugaad kiya, we came up with three new chefs and we thought that instead of having just one person, we want to reduce dependency. We'll have three people cooking meals for different regions of Mumbai and that hmm. went well for a while and two months into it, they started acting up and we had a huge fallout with them and the fallout Shit. was bad because of... Uh, it was a Thursday morning. Thursday morning, unke jhagda hua with one of the guys. Thursday night, we thought, Theek hai, jhagde hote hai. Thursday night, he calls and says, listen, you've not paid me, so I don't have money to buy your stock, so I don't think tomorrow food delivery will be possible. So we thought, Theek hai, you know, this guy is uh, an idiot and we won't work with him in the future. He's trying to strong arm us. So mm. we call the other two chefs that, you know, this person has done this, so you all will be able to take the capacity, right? They're like, no, actually, you know, there's some problem that happened with us also and I don't think we'll be able to do it. And oh. that's when it struck us that Gaya. So we were around 80, 60, 65 clients deep at that point in time. And you're working hard, like typical hustling Obviously, phase. Yeah. Paanj paanj yeah. paanj so Sara khud ka, packing khud karo, delivery khud karo. And it was, it was yeah. irritating because you're we putting in everything and they did that. So we had to take a break from food darzi for I think a week and a half. Hum log mein, I think clients. food darzi clients ko, clients ko ye bolna pada ki aag lag gai kitchen mein and we know we're trying to get back strong and kya hi bolte yaar. I was the only point of contact. I yeah. was the nutritionist and I had a decent rapport with them. So obviously I wasn't telling them ki chef chhod ke bhaag gaya. Mm. So we made up this Damn. excuse. We tried finding new kitchens. Nobody thought that the subscription model works. Yeah. Which time that we started meeting hospitality industries. Huh. Like, you know, y'all have spare kitchens. Why don't y'all cook for us? They're like, the subscription model is bakwas and it just can't work. Who's going to pay you so much money up front? And you're like, okay, that's your point of view. Till we found a new person. Hmm. This new person, it functioned well. He was another chef who was running a commercial kitchen. So this was our proper commercial kitchen. Hmm. Jahape, there were certain processes that were followed. Eventually, we had a fallout with him as well because we saw that he's undercutting and from the vendors and all of that. Hmm. And at that point, we were like, we're done with it. We've been operating food that is for eight months. I think we know our shit. We know how to run a kitchen. And whatever we don't know, we learn. We got our own kitchen space. And again, that was the best decision that we made again. So we burnt our hands three times with yeah. different outsourced Fish. chefs yeah. and eventually realized that having your own setup is good. And it comes with its own pros and cons. Of course, yes. Hmm. Sometimes more money, sometimes more hassles, more compliance. But again, good decision, bad decision. Now, now it, it puts you to scale also, right? Now, if yeah, you have your own kitchen, you puts you to scale. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. No, this is very interesting what you mentioned, right? You said that, uh, and when was this when people said subscription nature like India? This was two, two and a half, maybe three months. This was 2017, August. Wow. Yeah. I think that was August. before the entire subscription kicked in in India. Exactly. Right? This was when exactly. the only subscription FMCG or in the food section was raw pressery at that point. Was raw pressery. Started with subscription and then just yeah. became over the counter kind of a thing. Even they yeah. kicked off subscription. And I, I I know it for a fact because in Bombay, I, I know even one of my close friends, he started this as well. Built a kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chembur, he was doing, uh, what do you call that? 
healthy meals and then diet plan mm. you know, yeah. mm. uh, but then i he also got screwed with the chef same thing yeah. something happened there and then also i realized that when you have rent and uh, chef and then inventory and then delivery um, yeah. your margins are way for thin are at that point very thin very, very thin, thin, very thin margin. unless you charge high unless you exactly. keep it premium right exactly but exactly. because of the other zomato swiggy and that culture and plus you have to be on zomato i mean they were on zomato yeah uh, and the march commission to zomato is a different issue exactly. because obviously you can't build your own app all yeah. that combined i think even when he was selling a veg meal uh, a single veg meal and mm-hmm. maybe 295 bucks he was barely breaking you damn right yeah that's that's life <laughs> and this was chembur <laughs> like this was not even indifferent. i was helping him with the financials and i was a finance guy so i was like I, it doesn't make unless you hit volume like incredible yeah. volume even yeah. then it doesn't seem satisfying right it's still yeah. okay you you don't make that much but i think this culture of moving towards subscription and healthy eating has changed a lot right now right what Definitely. do you think what do you think got that with with india like this culture of like i okay. would never do this before right but now it's completely normal for me to order meals you know, and for 15 days i think what you say so right because i wouldn't ever do this before like yeah. when i started this at that time maybe i sochta tha that you know there's a subscription based model actually work you have to commit to 30000 rupees up front and all of that yeah. i think the change is still not here to be honest we speak mm. about subscriptions um of course you do have you do have netflix and you have amazon prime but the ticket mm. size is really small i still don't feel that a subscription with an extremely large ticket size still works because mm. when you've paid so much now you're always trying to find ways to end the subscription i think that's what the psychology of a person gets mm-hmm. that every small mistake that is made every small inconvenience that is caused to you makes you go becomes, back and reflect becomes yeah. much larger it's blown out of proportion because you've paid so much money up front yeah. so in my opinion if food dirty has to continue doing well see there is i don't understand but uh, see we're not that large yet like yes of course we have a certain valuation in the eye of the beholder and all of that but we're not that large <laughs> like, yet this is typical uh, image i think this the three friends are rubbing off on you right yeah, yeah because i very used to be excited to yeah. you know i went and gave this one josh talk and mai tesh mein ja ke shaan se ja ke bola that food dirty ka valuation abhi abhi aaya 100 crore rupya and when i came back they're like what is wrong with you not why talking. would you go that and put that in a public platform and i'm like i didn't know about this you're supposed to coach me on these things you didn't tell me anything so us din ke baad maine kabhi muh nahi khola hai valuation ke bale mein yeah but yeah like the valuation is just a multiple of your revenue a... or profit it doesn't make sense Yeah, it's their perception of you, basically. Exactly, but I still don't think a subscription-based model is completely, completely set. Like you know, even as food dirty, we're always trying to create. See, we want to move with the subscription-based model because I feel, साथ साथ में थोड़ा loyalty भी आता है, साथ साथ में थोड़ा community building भी होता है, because the way people talk about, at least this is my perception. Maybe I'm biased, but hey, you know, we did food dirty, but nobody says hey, you know, we did Zomato. True. There's no true, true, no, true, true. Of course, Zomato is much larger. That is why that example doesn't make sense. But yeah. you know, we did food. There is what we want to go for, and we always want to stick with the 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 subscription based model. But keep trying to find like these outlets out of a subscription that mm. can draw people into the subscription. Got it. Got it. No, so that I makes sense. I still don't feel a subscription based model is completely sorted in India. I don't think it's going to be for a while because let's face it, yeah. How many people are are ready to spend thirty thousand rupees on food when you can have ghar ka khana when you can have ghar ka khana yeah so our market size is also like the demograph that we are catering to is quite different the retention rate per demograph rate uh, per demograph is also very different mm. and just the way people own india today i put out a post on my instagram of i was trying that new collaboration feature between two accounts so i put yeah. out a post saying why is food there is the, the most convenient way to lose weight and i firmly believe it is i haven't mm. come across like there are a lot of me too brands in the market right now trust Correct. me not out of bias we still better than them for whatever mm. reason we are and it it is very convenient but it's thrice a thousand rupees per day and out of the 100 comments i've got 50 say that who will spend 1000 rupees thousand per day bucks. i understand that yeah yeah no, i think the target audience is slightly it. premium right yeah. it's, it's, i don't think it's like i i told you this right my my dad did it for 30 days and he did mm. it with my sister because he wanted company yeah um <laughs> my father in law is doing it he did it for 30 days but yeah. so these people are at the age of 45 to 55 right at that group mm-hmm. and have yeah. significant amount of disposable income exactly and for them health is more important than wealth now exactly. <laughs> like it, it's it's a exactly. different mindset if you ask a young person they like was paisa is more important than health wealth is absolutely. more absolutely uh, so i think that uh, that slow shift in mindset will come 
बट कोविड कॉस्ट इट कोविड कॉस्ट इट कोविड की वजह से लोगों का हेल्थ के ऊपर इन्वेस्टमेंट करने का नजरिया थोड़ा बदला है देर मोर ओपन टू स्पेंडिंग समथिंग स्लाइटली मोर बट स्टिल आई थिंक इट्स इट्स अ वाइल आई फील दैट यू हैव टू कीप प्रेसिंग हार्ड एट इट स्मार्ट एडवर्टाइजिंग गुड सर्विस and of course having a good face building the brand for you like i only True. got on to instagram when i realized that when i speak to a client and i tell them that you know i genuinely feel that you should continue for another 35 days hmm. they listen and continue no not misleading True. them but when my nutritionist tells them my nutritionist will tell them you know you still not met your goal they'll think it's biased exactly yeah yeah and that's what i'm trying to create i want to create that community and Of course, there will be enough people who can afford food that is also, and yeah. we just hope Indians make more money. No, I <laughs> I think that's 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 fair, right? Because our entire thesis of scenes itself is built on community and the founders yeah. being the face of that. Because exactly. we realize that if your salesperson goes and sells, you know what? We'll teach you how to build a community. It looks like yeah, he's getting incentives to get this, yeah. but I'll be like, dude, I've been there, done that. We ran a community before. We know exactly what it what is required. that gives the other person more confidence to take a bet yeah. right i'm not saying it might might not work out it's fine but you take a bet on that conviction of of the face of the founder and keeping it that way but then i mean what i would say is incredible man i mean what you guys are building is is top notch by and i know it's difficult in the in the life of an entrepreneur being there uh, running a company and keeping up with the current trends and being on instagram and maybe going to youtube tomorrow oh my god it's it's the most uh, difficult thing ever Uh, it's difficult and i think it leads to a lot of insecurity man like before the entire instagram thing i was such a secure person <laughs> and now an 18 year old with 500000 followers on instagram bothers me and then i have to knock some sense into my head saying ki tu kya kar raha hai like why are you getting bothered by it but that is life uh, this is something that happened to me right um, <laughs> it's a shift in the platform okay so for example i'm very good at long form content like 30 okay. minute youtube videos explainers mm-hmm. igtv was the trend and i was killing it when it was igtv right then cut to we came to reels okay now uh-huh. i can't explain finance in 30 seconds yeah. um with reels without doing some script or a prop or, and i'm not good in 30 second explanation and there the algorithm kicked in such a way for other people where it's just short oh, yeah. right i mean yeah. it's short and i'm still stuck making igtv which gets obviously not promoted too much yeah. but now i'm trying to do reels now but the thing is the platform is actually choosing the way you behave uh, with respect to your content and that kicks in with your insecurity aspect yeah well. man and then there are people like uh, i was speaking uh, i was i was actually going through your content and um, i saw the igtvs that you've made and then i've gone and seen other people's content and it's and people are lifting things off your work how does how does that make you feel man like yeah, i've that, seen I, I, lift I, I, work <laughs> word by word and yeah, it's in my that. mind <laughs> no, no, I I saw that. I think uh, so. Me and Raj also recently when when I came there, we met in Bombay. Uh, with Raj Vaibhav. So you're talking about that. Apparently, they picked up from multiple people, not only me. And I'm like, bro, I can't help it, man. I mean, I try, I do it. Uh, it happens, it happens. If people understand it, they will eventually find out. Yeah. Uh, people are not dumb. They're smart. So a lot of people think people are stupid, but I keep saying, dude, they're actually very smart because in India you have a lot of time. figure out these dots <laughs> and they will figure it out right True. uh they're True. not minding their own business they like minding your business yeah. right so anything <laughs> happens they're in it for uh but yeah that is something that is crazy okay so i want to ask you a final question right hmm. um what do you think is going to be the future of the fitness industry or you know with with respect to uh you know the food business or anything okay. with respect to that where do you think we're moving because after covid definitely there is a switch that okay. we can guarantee with respect to the the food industry of, of course right now they were all going through a major major crisis yeah. certain companies still did well but i think moving forward uh, health is definitely going to become a much larger game for sure uh, even swiggy and zomato for example they have their own sections on on health yeah. uh, much large i think reliance is planning to get into food um there was another large company that was planning to get into food and everybody wants to be in the space because they've seen the dependency people have on food so yeah. i think the food industry is just going to get a whole lot more saturated or uh, restaurants i feel are going to become much smaller they're going to turn into like these boutique spaces where you still manage to go to them mm. for like an experience yeah. but people are going to strongly bank on the dependence people have on food mass health food is going to become a much larger thing so uh, i genuinely believe that um 
stores are going to start selling a lot more healthy food of course whenever the stores open up because people mm-hmm. are trying to enter the mass health category like for example um food darzi ke bhi competition aane wala like i i strongly believe that one of these larger companies is going to start selling at a lower price and all of mm-hmm. that and they're going to be in the soup but um a rickshaw wala for example i have seen a lot of rickshaw walas talk about that uh telling their wives like uh, and i know a couple of them because we have like this small community here so they've been telling their wife that meri bivi sir meri bivi khane mein bahut tel dalti hai and when i heard this thought i realized yeah. that bro there is a shift that is happening because never before had i heard a person who doesn't want to worry about health actually start giving a shit about these things yeah. so i feel mass health products are going to take like they're going to start hitting the roof a lot of more menu shifts are going to happen a lot of more uh, companies are going to get involved in food per se Hmm. and i just hope nobody undercuts food that's the and we get finished man like that's yeah. that's the only this is have. very interesting because i have also realized this that a lot of people are becoming more aware of what they're eating right earlier yeah. it was not the case uh now as you said right bot tail dalti now he knows that tail is bad why because it leads to something uh either he has seen a whatsapp forward or some video but there is a general perception of that yeah. uh even with me right I, so the reason why i did food darji was you won't believe it but at this age i'm 28 29 i had cholesterol right oh wow. can you believe that right at this age and it had gone up to 400 uh, the that triglycerides triglycerides yeah 400 that is dangerous man which is very dangerous so yeah. and uh, everyone panicked my wife panicked and my mom panicked everyone panicked and i'm like okay calm down okay i met sid warrior he gave me some tablet and then my mm-hmm. uncle and my father in law said just do food darji you'll be fine right yeah. i said cool what now i i have no option to say anything <laughs> my wife got a book about what is cholesterol and how to defeat it and yeah. because of that i got educated on what are good fat and bad so i never knew what right. good and bad fat was right and yeah. then i realized this scam that if you look at anything it says cholesterol is zero but then there's precisely. trans fat uh, precisely and now i know but i always used to look at cholesterol zero it kuch nahi hoga but the trans fat yeah. is massive and i think one, your nutritionist also told me right take uh, what is that mofa pofa i'm not sure what it's called yeah. but unsaturated unsaturated correct so now i know right now for yeah. the rest of my life i know but i feel yeah. a lot of people today are educating themselves whenever they get a problem it's so easy to just go to google and be like mm-hmm. dude what the hell is this and yeah. you educate and then after that you be like how do i solve this first correct. they try to do it at home and then they see that the temptations and ex- extra curricular things always screwed up and mm-hmm. then they find out solution and they go outside and try to figure it out right and even if it's like i've also realized one more switch that a lot of companies the the lot of food companies are coming out with their own standalone apps yes and because it is not sustainable absolutely with the margins right and not only yours i've seen a lot of other companies who are also there mm. at a slightly higher rate but you come mm. on our app and order it there and you get maybe 10 15% off as yeah. well yeah uh, so that is something that i see happening that a lot of standalone apps are coming into the picture and now it's becoming easier and easier for people to yeah. come on so insane man i think this yeah it's definitely going to become like one of the biggest it going to become saturated cutthroat and you know it, it's difficult to sort of predict what's going to happen because we know for sure that when you see we haven't raised money yet but that's only that's going to be the only next thing to do right if a giant says that we're entering into this market they'll make more noise than you they'll, they'll educate awareness than, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so Fingers no man, crossed. I think I think no no no. I think you guys will figure it out because you said your other three co-founders also are very smart <laughs> when it comes to Danda. Yeah, so I think uh, you have a slight edge on other people. Uh, but yeah, it's it's two schools of thought, right? Either you go profitable, um, do it your way, or you get funding and get distribution first, and then turn out the profitability tab. But yeah. either way, I think it it's a win-win. And as long as you enjoy it, I think that's absolutely good. man. Awesome. So I think I'll end it. End it here. Um, Super. Any any parting thoughts to anyone who's entering the food industry? Like one. Final Anybody advice. entering the food industry? Uh, I think one thought, one advice that I will want to give you is find your niche. Even when you're entering the food industry, there is really no point of saying that you know I'm going to set up a restaurant, a cloud kitchen because mm-hmm. you've seen a lot of cloud kitchens work. True. It doesn't work that way. Like the cloud kitchen industry is also so very saturated. So find your niche even over there. If you mm-hmm. want to be that person who only sells different kinds of crossovers, you still might work because people still might want to buy those crossovers. But find your niche when you're getting into even a cloud kitchen based setup, yeah. and yeah, just find your niche. So don't go into know FOMO. Do. Don't go into what? FOMO. Uh, just focus on what you're building and differentiate yourself. Yes, because I've seen a lot of people. Oh, everyone's selling sandwich burgers. I'm going to sell burger. 
that's yeah. happening right now thoda yeah. <laughs> wo bhi yeah. ho raha hai ek trend aa raha hai yeah yeah <laughs> uh oh, crazy okay i think i i hope that was good advice for everyone again sid thank you this is 10 pm in the night and you are giving me your time so uh, <laughs> really you. appreciate it thank you for coming here educating a lot of people on how the food industry works and hope you enjoyed it as well superb i loved it man thank you so much for having me awesome awesome thank you sid chalo bye cheers